All right, this is a, or an, unboxing video for the Fantasy Trip Decks of Destiny. The I Want All the Newness and uh, some, some add-ons as well. The audio's down on this. Oh yeah, there was a little bit of damage on the box that I was concerned about, but we are about to dive in and explore the contents. So the box is open, a little protective bit of cardboard is moved, and there are some uh, folders for holding character sheets, etc. with the cephalopod uh, throwing down some, uh, looks like very rider weight tarot cards, but then on the back, the different folders have different little tables. So for here, there's random stocking of dungeons, uh, fighters that you may encounter, treasure, etc. And uh, all very well done. So I managed to get two of those because, come on, who wouldn't want two of those? And then we move on and two, and we will be laying these all out. The wizard's spider lair. And this will have a different set of tables on the back. Again, character sheets or dungeon notes, whatever. So this one goes into how experience points are uh, distributed, gained, what they can do, uh, how you spend those points on uh, learning either talents and or uh, spells. This was one of uh, several boxes that were a part of the campaign and added in as uh, add-ons for, you know, your counters, etc. So, and then we move over to the side here. What do we have here? These are two, uh, I believe it's neoprene. It may be a different material. Someone can correct me in the contents down below. But these are two maps designed for use with the game. This one is the Octopus Lair. It's a smaller dungeon that you can create an, an adventure around for your adventurers. And there we go, Octopus Lair. And then the other one, I believe, is the Spiral. Let's see here. Let's take a look. This is uh, the Spiral Arena. Both very good. And this one was available in several different colors. So this, I believe, is my add-on box here. I may be wrong, but I do believe that that is what this is. So we have a look in. Start pulling out a plethora of various boxes for your counters, dies, or dice. I guess that would be the plural, wouldn't it? Ooh, beer. Hmm. But these were all very well done with some uh, wonderful artwork and embellishments making it look like uh, aged leather. So we'll set that one off to the side. And bring down this. Oh, Dire Wolf. Looks like a gargoyle down there. But again, these were... Uh, all add-ons or stretch goals. Oh, skeleton warrior as well. And that is the one thing I do. Well, I have many things to say about the Steve Jackson games Kickstarters. But one of the things I do have to say is that they know how to run a Kickstarter to get you hooked. A smaller box. And we'll set that off to the side. A little more view there. And then, let's take a look at this one. Some fighters. Looks like an archer and a, a fighter with a rapier. It looks like a Roman soldier going up against a wolf. Some very wonderfully uh, retro game counter artwork. And we're going to see what else is left in here. Ah, another one of the uh, stretch goal boxes, as I recall with what look like two 
wands crossed, emanating magic. And then, well, we all were starting to lay this stuff out, as you can see here. So, that's the hall so far. And then, so this was uh, an add-on, and it's uh, some hand-to-hand -hand option combat cards, uh, some player character or NPC cards, and a dry erase, and they are dry erase. And you can see those hexagrams there, those record hit points, etc. A couple journals, Fantasy a Trip Journal, with a blank space, so you can name it whatever you want. On Cephalopod. And then you can see the compact uh, character cards over there, which, uh, as you can see, you can list spells and talents, etc. And those can be used for your characters or NPCs, and even more compact, along with some uh, green and black die, dice. And let's see, oh, what are those? So these were a pretty amazing add-on to uh, the campaign. These are metal dice that the original Fantasy Trip Melee Wizard artist did the artwork for, and they are actually selling the originals currently, and that thing hits the table with a smack. So this is the dragon die. You can see there are different dragons on there get the camera to focus and you can see the number four on the side there oh, and then we'll go to this so there's one dragon and then there's one with uh, mages and fighters on it and again this thing is massive if you're gonna roll this on a table you better not care about that table But amazing, and I've actually ordered a third one so I can have, because most of this game is 3D6. Something tells me if these die hit each other. Oh yeah, it's a resound. Nope, oh, box is empty. All right, so let's move on to the real deal here. The actual I want it all box. So we'll get a good close up of the artwork here. Yeah, that's not looking good for whatever character rolled, pulled those cards. And we'll flip the uh, box around to take a look at a couple of the sides here. This is uh, interesting to do with one hand when you're recording. You can see some of the contents that we've already covered. And then the back of the box, and we'll do a scan here. It gives a, most cards are dry erase, as you can see, and the contents. You can freeze frame this to see exactly what was included. All of this product is amazingly high quality, and the, the, the nerd in me that bought the original round of the Fantasy Trip back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, this is hog heaven. This is what the game should have been. So, you can see even inside the uh, cover of the box, you have all sorts of things where you can roll 1d6 to uh, stock your dungeon randomly. Your labyrinth, I should say. And it gives you a taste of uh, just some random generation, which is what this particular uh, edition is about. You get a little sheet that says read me first and tells you um, how these different things can either flavor your campaign or help you as a game master plan a campaign. And there's our cephalopod one more time. And to the guts of the game. So Fantasy Trip Labyrinth. We'll take a look at this. Uh, is basically a journal. It's full of hexagrams. And you can see, you can, I think the idea here is you can make a pre-programmed 
labyrinth. You know, you can go go from page 12 to page 24, and then the labyrinth hexes you can use to create a randomly generated dungeon. You can see here the way to uh, use them. I'm going to let you read that here. But this is a great idea so that you don't have to necessarily put a lot of forethought. You can let this, and you can put notes on the back of these, but you can see how these might fit together. I think I put one together that doesn't quite fit, but you can see how that fits together. And then I think if I had, yeah, if I had rotated this one, it would have worked. But you could also move that hex down and you can see the split mega hex there. And then it would have worked. And this is, an, so you have some character cards, some NPC cards. You can put notes on the back about each NPC you may encounter and then dry erase it. That again is a, the add-on that I got. This was part of it, but I got another add-on of it earlier. And we're gonna play, oh, look at this die up there. Then <clears throat> some pre-packaged, pre-made character and encounter. Oh, look at this. So far, we're just getting into the main box of this and we come down to some creatures. You can see Crabman, you can see the uh, characteristics, some actual animal creatures, and you can see it'll tell you where they might be encountered, which comes in handy if you're trying to program uh, an adventure, and some NPCs that you could then write the backgrounds of for these guys. See, there's the notes. You can invent their history for the animals as well. And these are all dry erase. And this is the uh, journal that is, it's for either the DM or, or the GM, I should say, or the characters, the players, to map their journeys on, or for you to create an, uh, a, a, uh, an adventure, a dungeon, a labyrinth. Then we have rumor cards and two sets of treasure cards. And the two sets of treasure cards are different, but you can see how they work here. The players discover some treasure, you just roll a die and it will tell you what they get. And like this one, a two inch piece of charcoal that detects magic, detects as magic. If someone writes with it, they will, the writing will be beautiful. If they draw, the result will be perfect, but you can only use it so many times. Rumors of treasures. And you can see that this one, so you could either make this a rumor or you can make it actually happen. And then you have your treasures and rumors journals that you as a, a game master can use. These are not dry erase, so your notes are, unless they're in pencil, are final. But you can use these as well for adventures. So there we go. Let's see, where are we so far? Oh, and then these are the bookmarks that they did that also serve as uh, NPC or character cards. So you can use these as placeholders or also as character cards. Look at that, all of that stuff there. Now we get down to the Mega Hexes set two, which uh, is an addendum to the Mega Hexes set that was included with the Fantasy Trip original Kickstarter, and you can see some of the artwork here. Now these are die cut on cardstock, very thick cardstock. Another journal, Fantasy Chip Trip Journal. I didn't open this one, I don't believe, to see what it was. It may be more uh, hexes. It could be a blank journal as well. But you can see, uh, looks like some either a pit full of lava. You can make it when you, what you want to be. Oh yeah, that guy's fallen into the lava and lost his legs. So let's see, so far, here's where we are. Here are the Mega Hexes 
out and again you punch these out and then you can also use them and these are dry erase so you can draw in your own stuff you can use these on a, one of the big maps if you wanted to and place them directly on top it looks like we've got a good bonfire we've got some mushrooms and fungi growing perhaps a slime of some form yeah, more slime etc oh some statues uh, cephalopod statues it looks like perhaps and some mysterious symbols and then we get to the uh, I'm gonna punch this one out here there we go so you can see and then you could lay this on one of those battle maps or you can co combine these edge to edge to create a map then we've got some footbridges, some grates across a pit with one hex missing that would fit a person. Oh, and, and there's a lot of people having bad days on this artwork. Uh, mega hex size spider, uh, some hex size spiders. You can make them alive or dead. A very large spider web over a chasm or a small chasm. And then we move on to these, and let's see. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that guy really is. How he's he's been having a bad day for a while. But the artwork and the utility of these are amazing. Coffin, which would really go well with the uh, geek games uh, counters that I was covering earlier in an earlier video some arachnids, more chasms with webs, oh, a guillotine, a pit full of spikes at the center of a mega hex, dragon's head, uh, he's had another bad day, uh, a pedestal or uh, altar of some form, but we're still going here, very large battle axe, more pits, more uh, broken rope bridges, Perhaps they were trying to cross the rope bridge and it broke and you need a marker. Yeah, there's that battle axe again. I would not want to face what, what whatever was wielding that. Some broken ground. Oh, some stairs leading down. Broken cephalopod sculpture. Some ladders you can use from, dimension, from level to level. And these I'll have to look up. I'm guessing these are stair hexes and how far they go down to which level, but I've got to I've got to look these up. I plead ignorance on these. So that is the mega hexes pack and this I had to shoot this from the second floor of the office to show you what all came in this particular Kickstarter campaign. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I think you should look forward to more uh, product by Steve Jackson Games regarding the fantasy trip. Hope you guys enjoyed this.